So what about that different? You, you acknowledge that is, that is one like subjective truth depending on your perception and one main ultimate truth which could be, I don't know, the Brahman or something? The Brahman, yeah. So I was going to say the way you're asking the question, the, que the answer is in the question, is there one truth? The one is the truth. One is truth. So it, and and uh, what Maharaji would often say to Ram Das is he would hold his finger up and he goes sub ek, sub ek. And sub ek means all one in Hindi. Mm. All one. We all say it, all one, all one, all one. And so that's the teaching. That's the penultimate philosophy of Vedanta. It's what shows in every other religion at the deepest level philosophically is that nature of oneness. Mm. But in, in English, it's hard to express non-duality or Advaita sure. because oneness uh, in the way we use language implies two. So if I say oneness, your brain can automatically go, but what about duality? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So oneness is a bad word. There's like no English equivalent to Advaita, to pure beingness. Mm. So I, I like to say that it's allness. This allness is reality. There is no other truth. Every other truth is a mind-created truth. It's a, mm. it's a mentally infiltrated truth based on perceptions and linguistics. But that oneness is the only is the pure pentelment truth because since it's one of those, it's hard to wrap your brain up, it's almost like a paradox. Since there is... Since there is existence, there cannot be non-existence. Mm. Existence is, and that's, that's Advaita at the core. Uh, a famous saying, uh, one of the four uh, Mahavakyas is Tattvamasi. So it means thou art that. So you are that. And by that, it doesn't mean you are just you, me or her or, or the other people around us or people in Bali or people around the world. It's like that you are that, all of it. Mm -hmm. You are all. So, so allness, allness slash is, oneness would be the ultimate yeah, truth, and what they, they reserve, yeah. they, they, they talk about the Brahman in, yeah. in Hindu philosophy. Yeah, and Brahman and so literally represents allness. So all the Hindu pantheon, the Trimurti, it all comes out of Brahman. Exactly. It's a manifestation of Brahman, so to speak, that, that's, that allness. That's interesting, because the yeah. mind would never understand that, no, right? and that's the thing, it's an experiential truth. It's an experiential it's not, truth, It's not yeah. a truth. You can come to that realization with logic and rationale. That's the whole point of Gnana Yoga, is that like intellectual, like getting to a point where you can almost kind of be like, oh, I get it, one. But then you have to dive into the path sure. and, and really feel it. So my Swami would always say that, you know, he'll have a, he'll have a really deep esoteric um, saying come up in the video or in, in his lecture. Yeah. And he'll be like, he'll kind of like mock himself and like throw you out and maybe like, why did you do that? And he'll be like, look, me saying this, me saying you're all, we're all one and Tatsvamasi and thou art that. <sighs> That's all fine and dandy, but until you feel that truth, it's just words. Mm. All one is just words until you are exactly. all one, and then you kind of get a little glimpse. One of my philosophy teachers in Rishikesh, he say, eh, eh, man, you are eh, everything. And I was like, oh, thanks, teacher, but also you're nothing. Yeah. And I was like, what? You're yeah. so good. But also you're so bad yeah. it's like the, the opposites it was like try it. what the hell he's talking yeah. about and that's the funniness about wording in buddhism versus hinduism is buddhism says emptiness yeah hinduism says fullness but they mean the same thing <laughs> so that's the paradox exactly. of the philosophy is they mean the same thing by empty and full we need to merge buddhism and hinduism and then become everything and nothingness at the same time yeah it's hilarious <laughs> yeah because yeah ex exactly beyond the mind if we're talking about allness on oneness if you say that's everything mm -hmm. is it's not fair that not include nothingness yeah. in the everything, which is which is paradoxical. Exactly. Uh, so Alan it, 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 say puts like, the in a feed, it puts the mind in a feedback loop to try to just understand it without embodying it. So that's yeah. why it's so important to merge practice with philosophy. Yeah. Which is still useful, hacking the mind, yeah. and the mind's like, what the hell is going on? Yeah. And in the experience, like, the realization that this is, this is real. Yeah. It's, it's one of those things like, you understand it when you stop trying to understand it. Yeah, yeah. In yeah. that moment of pure... <laughs> <laughs> Effortlessness is when you understand it. So you can't like be like, I'm gonna get it today. It'll never come that way. Yeah, I remember. Well, yeah, Alan Watts was um, uh, talking about this. And the other day, I sent you a video about mm -hmm. about Michio Kaku, one of the yes, uh, scientific. Yeah, I read his books. And he was saying, well, the last research, and it was like a couple of years ago. The last research is saying that the universe it shouldn't exist. Mm -hmm. And he, he explained that in the, in, the, in the news. And I was like, but what is that? Yeah, because we are studying matter and antimatter and the laws of the universe, and basically we shouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. So basically the truth was a paradox that makes me remember when Alan Watts was saying that the most deepest truth of the universe are paradoxical. Yeah, exactly. So and I was saying, wow, Michio Kaku and all these scientific guys are, are kind of, like, this is a mistake, but what, eventually you know, getting there. Yeah, and Zen Buddhism has been using something na na called cones. Have you heard of cones? Yeah, yeah, the cones. Cones yeah. are kind of paradoxical sayings in Buddhism that mm. are literally meant to break your brain. Like, because it, it, they exist to show you that the mind doesn't, it can't know or understand everything. That a perfectly natural question can be asked, and it just shuts down your ability to understand mm. it. You can't answer it. 
So it's like one of the one of the references I use is uh, like I ask people, "What's north of the North Pole?" Yeah. <laughs> so it's one of those things like you can ask a question and with a sentence structure, it makes sense, but there's no logical answer exactly. to that. So now we have.